Welcome club officers and congratulations on your appointment to become a club officer for your club. And also let me welcome those of you who might be just perusing the on-demand training to see what it might take to become a club officer. And I hope you do at some point in the future. Today, we're gonna to be talking about the club success plan. I am Heather Osborne. I am the District 100 Program Quality Director, and I will be running you through this program. They say that a goal without a plan is just a wish. And our wish is to become a distinguished club, but I'm going to walk you through how to create a plan to become a distinguished club. First, let me share how to get to the club success plan. I want you to log in to toastmasters.org site and you will get to your landing page. This is the screen you see when you first log in. And if you're a club officer, you will have, you can scroll way down here to Leadership Central and you will see Club Central. Click into Club Central. And it will give you, you scroll down a little bit, the club success plan. It's pretty straightforward. And there are two different ways to do the club success plan. The first way is the slightly more modern version, a little more digital. And then the way that we're gonna do today is the manual upload. So the digital version has the, each section broken out and you can enter input in there. But the reason I recommend doing the manual version is that you can work on a piece of paper with your executive team and come up with your answers in advance. It's easier to work and collaborate on a piece of paper, whether it be digital or whether it be the real thing. And then you can cut and paste it into this digital section if you so prefer. But you can also, at the end of it all, upload it. So what you wanna do is you wanna get the template that you're gonna work from. It's the same whether you do it digital or whether you do it manual, but today we're going to download the template. And I will say that this download template link sometimes doesn't work right. If it does not work right, you can go and in the search box, type club success plan and download the same template from there. But I wanted to give you the two options for being able to get to the same template. When you're all done, you can either upload the plan or you can go back to the digital version that I showed you and upload the bits and pieces, cut and paste it in there and you have it now safe in one document that you can work from. So let me stop sharing my Toastmaster site and instead share my template. So this is the club success plan. This is the template we just downloaded from the site. You want to go through, complete your program year, which is 2023, 2024 this time. And you want to add your club number, which is at the beginning of Club Central, you will see your club number there. Grab that. And this is broken into multiple sections. But the main thing you want to take note of is that you want to become a distinguished club. And with each of these goals, you will become distinguished, select distinguished, or president's distinguished, depending on how many goals you complete. So five of the 10 will take you to distinguished club. Seven of the 10 will take you to select distinguished. And nine of the 10 will take you to president's distinguished. But again, without a plan, it's just a wish. So what we're going to do here is create a plan. So the goals have been broken into four groups. We have our education goals. Those are primary. Those are what you're trying to do to make yourself a distinguished club, a quality club. Your membership is also a critical thing. If you don't have the members, you still can't be distinguished no matter how many education goals you complete. And then training. Training is the easy one. This is step one you're taking right here. You are doing club officer training. You're well on your way to getting your first distinguished club goal. And then administration, don't forget about that. That's paying the bills, that is doing the little bits and pieces of tasks that you need to do to keep your club well administrated. So what we're going to do 
is we're going to show you the sections that we need to fill out. So we have our committee values. What is your club executive committee values? And I'm gonna show you one of my clubs forms so that you have a little basis to work from. And remember, everything you fill out in here is very personal to your club. You may have a completely different way of doing things. I'm just providing you with an example of how my club filled it out. So the club executive committee values. We seek to welcome new Toastmasters and unify current members around the Toastmaster club vision. We wanna focus specifically on developing communication and leadership skills. We value friendship. This is very important to my club. Sincere support for others and helping others achieve their personal goals. So there is no right or wrong answer when you're filling out this blank template. It is honestly, what do you and your executive committee do? So we'll go back here. How will decisions be made? And what we said was we hold committee meetings the first Sunday of every month. We make motions relevant to developing club programs, promotions, and service projects. So this, again, will be up to you and how your committee works. For example, you could have asynchronous meetings. You could actually do it where you all fill out a Google Doc and share with your executive committee and everybody updates that way and don't actually have meetings. Or you could have a weekly meeting or biweekly meeting, monthly meeting, whatever it is, whatever is appropriate for how your club works. Like I said, there's no right or wrong answer. The next section, how does the club executive committee resolve differences of opinion? Again, this is another one that's going to be very personal to the club. You might have a situation where your club has the president makes all the decisions. You might have a situation where everybody has to take a vote on anything that comes up as a conflict. You might have Private discussions when it's around a member, you might have public discussions when it's around a policy. All of these things are very specific to your club. And then we'll talk about how the executive committee is being held accountable. So the president might do an agenda, the secretary keeps the minutes. Each of these roles that you have, president, secretary, sergeant at arms, et cetera, how is it that you keep track of how they're doing their job? And that can vary depending on the club. So let's go back over here to the blank. And here's the other thing to note is this is a living document. You might fill it out one way in July and by September it's outdated and that's not the way you do things anymore. There is no harm in changing it. There is no harm in updating it. There is no harm in making it completely different than what it was. The important thing is that you have your goals written down so that you can reference them, so that you can share them with your club, club mates and your team members, et cetera, and work from them. So club executive committee interactions. Like I just said, your club might be fully democratic. Your club might be authoritarian. Your club might be just indecisive. Whatever it is, it makes sense to have it written down. And then how will they resolve differences of opinions? We will go from there. So let me go to the next section. Member engagement. So that was what I just briefly flashed over to there for a second. When was the last time the club conducted the moments of truth? The Moments of Truth is a very important document that you can also download from the Toastmasters.org site by searching for Moments of Truth. This is a document that suggests ways for you to make your club a quality club. This isn't talking about your distinguished goals. This is talking about how you make your club welcoming, how you make your club someplace that people want to join and come back to. So there are a number of things in here and I'm not going to go into too much detail on this because this is a different education topic, but things like the first impressions when a guest comes, are they welcomed? Are they given the agenda? Are they explained to? Is everything that the, the guest might wish to do, is it available to them? 
are they offered membership materials when they enjoyed the club? Are they given a chance to join right away? Do they see that the club is friendly and welcoming and everybody works together and everybody has a nice time? You don't want to join something where people are not having fun. And things like membership orientation, et cetera, as I mentioned, you know, are you given an opportunity to join right upon coming to a club? So that was an option within the, the club success plan. When's the last time your team conducted it? You want to regularly present this to your club members. And then what strategies will the club use to ensure that members consistently attend? We have something in my club called Gym Buddies. This is a very loose mentorship program. It's an accountability. It's more of a, here's a friend that has a little more experience than me. This friend is going to make sure that I'm coming here and doing my things and I'm coming back. I'm doing the speech that I said I would do, et cetera. The education goals, that's what I said. The one of the primary functions of this club success plan is what are the education goals you're trying to reach? And here's just a couple that we laid out here. You want to accomplish in pathways, various levels to be able to reach each of those distinguished club goals. So we called out here that these following people would be hitting these education goals. And what this does here is it provides a little bit of accountability for people to try to reach these goals. Well, we said that you would reach this goal because you seem to be really close to reaching that next level of pathways. And we've got your name down here, please make your goal. And you'll see, I got myself down here as a level three and I kept running with it and did the level four and level five and closed out my pathway. And it's the same with a couple of other members of my club as well. It's a little tiny bit of accountability where you can make people feel like they should continue forward. From there, as I mentioned, the we'll talk about the motivating. We talked about the gym buddies, et cetera, offering an incentive program. Hey, if you get through two levels of pathways, we'll give you a cake. Uh, you want to celebrate every win. Every time somebody completes a speech, every time somebody completes a level, a pathway at level, you want to celebrate the fact that they've done that. We talked about strategies and tactics, what things are going to keep members from completing their goals. Well, we all have regular lives. We all have regular jobs. Toastmasters is something where we're hoping to build our skills and advance our careers, but we still have to keep everything else going. We can't walk away from our families. So that is something that we have to account for. You never want to demand that someone come do their speeches. You want to encourage them to do their speeches. And we called out as well. Some people might have a fear of public speaking. You potentially have to just push the baby bird out of the nest and get them to, to grow their wings and start speaking. And like I said, these are all very personal to your clubs. Your clubs might have a bigger set of conflicts. Your clubs might have a better way to encourage members. What is it that you need to do? Like I said, back to the blank. This is a blank slate. You can fill it in the way you want. Talk to your officers, figure out what it is that you are trying to do. So back to... The next section, the membership goals. I called this out at the very beginning that membership goals are the meat and potatoes of this. You have the education goals that you might do very well at. You might have a club that's just fighting over each other to do speeches and might just completely knock that one out of the park. But you might have too few members to become a distinguished club. Remember that you want to set membership goals because you always need to be aspiring to bring on new members. There is never a time you should stop recruiting. There is never a time you should stop trying to retain. And again, this is, as I mentioned, it's a living document. So if you do get to the point where you want to be, you improve on that. You add to that. You change the numbers. You need to get 
more members. You do not get a distinguished club point unless you get more members. And the number, the exact number that you need to get has can change over time. So you always want to check back on the Toastmasters.org site on the report section. You should see how many it is that your club specifically requires to meet a distinguished club. So right here, they call out 20 paid members or a net growth of at least five. Well, 20 is charter strength. And that is not necessarily the requirement anymore. And like I said, it changes. So go and look on the Toastmaster site to figure out what it is that the goal you need to aspire to is. Always be recruiting, always be encouraging, always work towards retention. And then strategies and tactics around it. So how do you keep people renewing? You need to regularly remind them that renewals are coming up. You need to regularly remind them that, hey, you, you might wanna leave the club, but no, we think you should stay because you are this close to completing another path. And that is one more step in your education plan. You want to get people renewing, you wanna get people joining. And then we called out, what is your plan to gain new members? Advertising through social media, go find me on Facebook, Instagram, et cetera. Uh, let's have an open house. Let's encourage people to come get prospective members to come in and see what it is that we're offering. It, we're a quality club. We would like you to see us as a quality club and you might wanna join us. And then something like bringing a friend, like let's give incentives to your club to get one more person in the door that might be a member. And then the next section of areas for success are officer training. As I mentioned, joining this training is the first step towards getting one of your distinguished club points. And you have two seasons of training. You have the one in the fall, and then you have the one in the spring. You need to get as many of your seven officers trained to get the point in both sessions. And what are some of our strategies around that? You encourage people, keep poking, keep poking, make sure that they attend training. You can't have a quality club without informed and educated officers. And I called out, you could give incentives. You, like I said, offer a cake, offer a Toastmasters pin, offer first speaker, at the open house, any number of things. People are motivated by different things. Again, very personal to your club. Then last but not least, the administrative goals. We have two things we need to do here. We need to get the bills paid. So that would be our renewals, getting our money to world headquarters on time. And we also have getting the officer list submitted in time. So right after you have your club elections, the Toastmasters year begins on July 1st, ends on June 30th. You need to have your elections before then, you need to have your officer list submitted before then. And that is worth a point, getting both the renewals and the officer list submitted. And then the last bit is you get your signature and you get that uploaded. And as I mentioned, you can do that either in the form of having that PDF ready and upload the PDF, or you can cut and paste all the little sections that you filled out and load those into the digital entry. And the other benefit that I should have called out earlier of having a club success plan is it's not just for your club, but it's also for your area director. When your area director comes in, if you have a club success plan, they are better able to assess you on what it is that you're trying to accomplish for your goals for this year. You have given them information, you have given them a path, a plan, et cetera, to be able to help them help you. A goal without a plan is just a wish. Go make your club success plan. Thank you. <laughs>